a brand new episode of Losers League of SE Reviewers. We're so glad that we'll be able to talk to you again. We miss you guys so much. For us, it's felt like, I don't know, years since we've last did this. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah. Like, what is 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are going to be talking about one of the videos that I just did this episode. But before we get into any of that, let's just say, hey, where are you guys at? You're at the League of SU Reviewers uh, headquarters. We're here. We talk about uh, videos that we produce or any kind of SE content and try to give each other positive, critical feedback because we know how important that is in order to get better. We think it's really important to show that we're really, you know, visual and like open about getting feedback from other people. And that's not just from the three of us in here, but it's also you too as well. So if you want to, feel free to leave a comment. And if, hey, if you like what you see, subscribe and stick around because we're always going to be producing high quality content for you guys so that we can continue to get better in this hobby that we enjoy, which is called SE, talking to each other about how we came to our beliefs. Uh, at the top of the show, let's do some introductions. Ben Diesel, how are you doing, hey. Ben Diesel? So good. So good to be with you guys again. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been weird. It's, it's just like something has been missing and I didn't know what it was. Now I'm <laughs> back with you guys and it's great. Right. Three best friends ready to kick some SE butt. And who, how could we do it without the great and incredible Linda Mako. Linda, how are you? I'm great. Hello, everybody. Um, so nice to see you guys again. Yeah, I really, this is like the best time of the months always when we get together or the week or whenever. This is the best time when we get to, when we get together. <laughs> <laughs> What's no, going on, Linda? No, it's okay. great. I love sitting and talking with you guys about street epistemology because I love street epistemology and I love you guys. And I love that we can help other people love street epistemology. That's what I wanted to say. Awesome. awesome. Go buy a donkey. Hey, speaking of go buy a donkey, <laughs> let's start the show by showing some love to some people that like listen to us in a section that... It's going to be pretty short, but we're still going to do it anyway, called Where is the Love? Where is the, Where love? Is the, love? the love? The love. The love. The so, love. So this episode is actually recorded a little earlier than the monthly release. So we actually don't have any comments in the last episode, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't comment. In fact, I really highly encourage you guys to, if you're seeing this video, drop a little comment and see what we could do to improve ourselves and what we could uh particularly due to make you guys more uh interested in trying this out yourself we think street epistemology is a great hobby that other people can try and you don't need a camera you don't need a microphone you just need to have an out you just need to take the chance to go outside and talk to people and really just ask questions and if you want to have any questions about that feel free to leave a comment and we'll be happy to introduce you to uh larger social media groups that we're involved in that can help you get the information that you need to get started on your own all right so, and of course, you're never really doing it your own because we're doing we're part of a league. So that's why we have this show. Anyway, though, uh, let's just say a quick buy a donkey, which means thank you in Africans, right, Ben? Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> now, your pronunciation is just so spot on. So I'm everyone, such a good teacher. Buy a donkey. Thank you very much for keeping up with this show. Anyway, buy a donkey. Before buy we get a donkey. Buy a donkey. How would you say it, Ben? I, we've never heard it from the mouth of the... Uh... Buy a donkey. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so Smile. we're going to go into one of my videos. It's one of the shorter ones that I had here at the Arboretum. But before we get into that actual really cool video, that one-on-two conversation, I want to have a goal session. And a goal session is we basically set up some goals that we want to have at the start of the SC video that will see if we meet by the end of the video and they can be anything you want. Linda, do you have a goal? What's your goal? For yes, that? I just thought about a goal actually when I was looking at the paper that I was writing on. This is something that Ben Diesel has conjured up. Oh my God. It's the street epistemology questionnaire. And I actually took this with me when I was in Lapland a while ago. I stayed in a cabin. I met some people, world travelers, <laughs> taking out the questionnaire and just asking the questions. It's like really easy. It's about what is truth. Truth is that which best matches external reality. And people get to think about their answer. Do they strongly agree? Agree. Neutral. 
disagree or strong, strongly disagree. And you just get to know somebody and how they like view the world, truth, reality, stuff like that. When should we change our minds? I think great questions and a fun way to kind of do SE where you have this like kind of help. I thought it was great. I did it four Very times good. and had wonderful times. And people like wanted to have their questionnaires and then they took them home and thought about it a little bit more. They said they would at least. Very so, good. Oh, yeah. So my goal is job, to get man. you guys to answer one of these um, questions through, somewhere in the show. Okay. Cool. Oh, wow. That's an interesting one. Cool. Ben. Sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> Linda, what did you have anything more? No, I was just going to say, so remember that the, the, the answers you can give is strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, or strongly disagree when awesome. I pose the question. Awesome. Awesome. This awesome. Is my goal. Nice. Ben, do you have a goal? I have to go dancing or go <gasps> to a dancing lesson with Rihanna straight after this. Okay. So I'm mentally practicing my foxtrot. I need okay. to get in the zone. You're gonna get you're gonna get that foxtrot in and out, right? Down, down, down. yeah. Me Fair too. Enough. Okay. Uh my goal at the end, as usual, is to master the Kamehameha wave in order to beat Cell at the tournament that's gonna show up pretty soon. I think I have a really good chance of saving the world. All right, you guys ready to do this? You yes, guys let's so, do it. Right. So I got a video that's as I'm introducing it. As I'm introducing the video, um, I go over to a park called um, the Arboretum, and the Arboretum is a really, really nice place to have these really, really nice, you know, pleasant conversations with people. And I had met a couple that were 100% confident that you should be nice to people. But of course, <laughs> the way how street epistemology works is you tend to get to the foundation of someone's belief very, very quickly using this method. And their foundation was that because a God existed. But because my, my style is I'll work with whatever people give me, um, what I did was just try to challenge the concept of being 100% confident about anything at all and, saw, and see if they had like a good reason to be completely justified, particularly if they don't know what it would take for them to change their mind or for them to recognize if they were wrong or not. Anyway, I want to show that video right now. If the audio is good, let me know. And let's not waste any time. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yes. go uh, for it. Tyrone, one, one, one question quickly, just before go, we... Go for it, go for it, go for it. Begin. I often investigate beliefs that do not match my own. Tyrone, how would you answer? I, uh, I pretty often, pretty often. <sighs> pretty often. Agree. Yes, I agree. I agree. Thank you, Tyrone. Let's go with your video now. Yes. By 100%, I mean there's no way you could be wrong. There's no right. way we could be absolutely wrong. Absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely true. Yes. No way you could be wrong 100%. There's no way we could be wrong. Testing my audio levels. Okay, we're good. So like anything that you find like personally motivating or like you've circled your life around or like you think is a philosophy other people should follow, those tend to be the most interesting conversations. If you want to talk about like the best Marvel movie that came out recently, <laughs> we could talk about that too. By the way, I'm Ty. So nice to meet Carla. you. Carla. I'm Francis. Francis. Yeah. Carla and Francis. Yeah. Carla. It's with the C. With the C? <laughs> this guy's got eagle vision. <laughs> Carla and Francis RF. I'm super careful with now. With the C. I S. Francis. You can spell it with, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to erase some of this stuff. <laughs> Look at me, this is how prepared I am today. <laughs> Very rarely do I have extra markers ready to go. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, like I said, I have a five minute timer. Okay. Um, and I like to talk to people about things that they really believe strongly is true, something they're confident about. Is there anything like that for you? Yes, definitely. I think we believe in helping others. Yeah, and that communication with everyone. What you were just mentioning before. That's the only thing that... Helping which... others? Yes. Okay, and as a fair warning, regardless of whatever you guys told me, I tend to like just gently challenge it anyway, so there might okay. be some double advocate please, questions here. Please, do that. Like, why help people? <laughs> yes. I'm just doing it to simulate the conversation. Sure. Anyway, so like five minutes helping <laughs> okay. people. Okay. All right, so um, what do you mean by helping people? Or... Well, what you said initially is very good, that... No matter what people well, look like, no matter what their background, creeds, right. country, right. language, mm -hmm. we should all be willing to break down these barriers and talk to one another. That's kind of what attracted me to what, <laughs> I what you said in the beginning. What you said, yeah. How strongly do you believe that that's something that other people should do? 
Oh, with all my being. So yeah. would you say then that you're Look like... Look who I married. Oh, you guys are married. <laughs> I was just about to say, you got he's, he lets you sit down. That's a keeper. I wasn't going to throw it out there. But like, I'm wondering... Um, yeah, so it's just like if would everyone st- would do that mm. and go outside their comfort zone, just imagine how the world would be. It would just be like one big family instead of all these different barriers yeah. that we yeah. put on. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. wondering, um, so like from a scale from zero to 100%, yes. and I'm just throwing this out, like how confident are you that everybody should be out helping each other? How confident yeah. about others? We don't know. We hope mm. that they would be better. Mm-hmm. But how confident are you that they would be better if they followed this philosophy? Oh. How confident? 100%. 100%. 100%. There's, yes. By 100%, I mean there's no way you could be wrong. There's right. no way we could be absolutely wrong. Absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. Absolutely true. Can, yes. No way you could be wrong 100%. There's no way we could be wrong. Oh. Because we go by the principle, <laughs> not by the simple laws of the matter. Because laws keep changing. Mm-hmm. Principles do not change. Principles don't change? No. Give me an example of a principle. Okay, let me change. give you an example. Yes, please. Speed. Speed? When you drive around here, what speed do you take? Uh, I take I take different speeds as I go around that turn. Good. Yes. When you go to Richmond and mm-hmm. you're on 75, what speed do you drive? I, I, on camera, I feel I probably shouldn't say this. You can drive up to 70. <laughs> legally. Legally. legally you Not in front 70. of me. <laughs> but, but here is my thing to you. Those are the laws. Mm-hmm. They have changed. Right. Depending on the circumstances. Yeah. But to take care of speed never changes. Because if you were to drive the same 70 year, you're going to have an accident. Right. Which will be pretty detrimental to mm-hmm. others. Mm-hmm. So on the highway you can too, but the chances are less if you follow the laws. Mm. So laws keep changing, but the principle of speed never changes because you take conscientious effort to follow that. So the principle is I'm minding the speed that I'm going at in concert with the people that are going around me so I don't have a bad impact on them. Right. And the laws will change because the laws this the year will say 25 Somewhere else it'll say 70, some other place it'll say 55. Mm-hmm. Just just on that principle idea, before we get back to like the main topic, mm-hmm. there are people who get in car accidents still from going too fast. True. Is, is the principle, is that them breaking the principle or is that them having a different internalized so principle? So now we are looking at imperfections of people. Mm. We're not looking into a principle of the matter, we are looking at imperfections of people. So the principle remains the same, the but the people who apply it are different. Or like they're they had a flat tire, and, uh, you know. Like there's different things that happen. I get it. I think yeah. I get where you guys are coming from. I'm wondering though, at a hundred percent confidence, this is gonna sound weird, but do you guys have a way to recognize if you were wrong that this may not actually be the best way, and that there might be a <laughs> yeah, completely look at the better world. way? <laughs> the world yeah. now is full of divisions and walls. So I would say the wall is an, the world is an example of why more people should help each other. Yeah. But I'm wondering, with the philosophy that you have that it's good to help other people, you're 100% sure that it's right. Yes. What would you recognize? Are you able to recognize anything yes. to lower you down on that confidence? No, because we <laughs> see it on a regular basis. Is that your the answer people, too, Carla? Yeah. With definitely. the people we react with and the people that we know from a variety of countries, no yeah. matter where they are from, mm. when they follow the same thing we do, mm-hmm. we've always had peace and harmony and complete, complete, what I would say is an absolute way of being friends. Mm. Yeah. I want to throw something out. Yes. If you're not able to recognize what it would look like if you were wrong, Mm. how can you be so confident that you're right? Because the only right thing that we have is the principles of the Bible. Oh, we went to a completely different direction. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stop it right there. Whoa, so we came to it. I thought it was really interesting when you ask, like, can you recognize if you were wrong? And he goes, like, immediate, automatically, no. And I've been right. wondering, what is that phenomenon in people? Because he's not really listening. Like, it's like he doesn't understand the question, really. He's just saying, like, right. he's almost answering the question, like, I cannot be wrong about this. Right. Not like, can you, can you identify if you are mistaken about this? It like, also, did you have a, a parameter for it? Or, mm. I also noted that he was giving me that answer very, very early on, but was distracting me with, like, the principal talk. And with like the speed limit talk and then going around curves and then he was asking me questions. So I'm like, we need to focus on what is the crux or the foundational glitch mm-hmm. in his reasoning, which is if you're 100 percent confident, 
but you don't know what it looks like if you're wrong, how can you justify 100% confidence? So I'm circling back to like that point in the most conversational way possible. So like, I'm not saying, hey, I don't wanna answer that question right now. Let me get back to the question. I'm like, I'll answer your questions, but we're gonna circle back down to this point that I think mm -hmm. is really important. And you, um, something that I thought was cool is once I got there, I got to the God belief. Yeah. <laughs> it was out of nowhere. It's just a and side effect like, of AC. You so always get to the God belief. <laughs> so like there's something that I call like the quagmire or like the swamp, the swamp model, which is like when you try to see like, okay, he's confident, but he doesn't know what it looks like when he's wrong. Let me see if we can get there and show him or not show, but like see if he's justified at being so confident without realizing what it would look like if he's wrong. And he's pulling me down into the swamp of like, hey, what's the speed limit? Hey, it's the principle of the matter. Hey, I believe in God. Hey, people need to be peaceful with each other. Hey, I've been to a lot of different places and everyone's really great. My wife is uh, different than I am. Like all these, all these things are like dragging you away from the main point, which is, are you justified at being 100% confident if you don't know what it looks like if you're wrong? Are you able, if you're not able to recognize if you're wrong, how can you be so justified in thinking that you're right to an absolute degree? That's more or less the point. Which I think uh, you, your talks would benefit from. When people take that position of 100%, try and get to what that means. Because um, yeah. I don't know if, if maybe there he is like, it's just something which should be placed at such importance that he has to project this 100% confidence. It, I, I don't know if he actually meant there is no way that in any circumstance this this is wrong. Mm. Uh, there's something I wanted to to just mm -hmm. show you guys uh, oh. that, that that idea you spoke about. Have you guys heard of the word Ubuntu? Yes, oh, you probably heard about the the no. Linux the Linux build. Yeah, so it's it's that's how you spell it. I don't know if you can see it. Ubuntu. Yes, and but you have great penmanship. Did I did I oh, shit? I thought I got it right. <laughs> anyway, so um, Ubuntu is is an African concept. Uh, which is pretty difficult to explain, but basically it's, uh, they've got a nice way of translating it here on Wikipedia. I am because we are. So it's this concept that humans do not exist as individuals. Uh, we're all connected and that is the most important thing to, to realize in the way you live your life is to recognize the humanity and dependence that you have on other people. So it's a very important and a uh, very beautiful concept in African culture. I thought it would have been a nice tidbit to share. Mm. Thank um, Buy a donkey. Buy a donkey. <laughs> buy a donkey. I, uh, we can get into the second half, but I would say when I was giving up a hundred, a uh, hundred percent scale, I normally follow it up when someone says a hundred percent that, and that means you can't be wrong. And they both, mm. have, they both affirmed yes. But Ben has a point. Even when someone says that, they may not recognize the weight of it unless if you give them time mm -hmm. to like consider that. So like pausing is also a good point at that point too. And maybe I could have paused after I said, so you, there's no way you could be wrong. No. Okay. Yeah. Now if we talk or about maybe that, calibrate kind of to see, um, you know, are you 100% about maybe some other other fact? Uh, mm -hmm. What does that mean? Some, just Ooh, something like that. What else mm -hmm. are you 100% about? That's really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Something I think which I just thought great. about as well is um is the jumping to the God belief, is that a way for somebody to try and ground the conversation on something which they think will establish commonality? Or basically stop the questioning. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah. This like, this is that that was what I was thinking, that um his answers were so quick. And uh, because of like no pausing also, I guess, because I was thinking now that the pausing, I think, could could have remedied it a little bit. But it was like principles. No, um, there's no way I can be like, I think he was answering when you asked, it, can you recognize if you're wrong? He says, no, there's n I th think he was a a answering. I cannot be wrong. And then it's like, I have the Bible. Right. Like the answer, the, it's here. This is why it's 100 percent. There's a really great dichotomy too. Be or the the guy says, "There's no way I could be wrong," and then I ask, "Is there anything that you would recognize to like maybe show you that you're wrong?" And the guy mm -hmm. says, "No," but the wife who's sitting down says, "Well, look at the world," and I'm like, "Oh!" Even though the guy's like, mm -hmm. "We agree that this is important," and he's looking at me, the wife is on a completely different wavelength. And when we continue the rest of this conversation, look at the face of the wife who's sitting down, 
as we're talking compared to the guy who's standing up pontificating because it's it starts off like one to one and then just like huh we might have to talk about this later on which i thought this would make like a really cool video anyway you guys feel like we can knock out the rest one sure yes all right so interesting i'm gonna go back to screen sharing thing that we have is the principles of the bible Oh, we went to a completely different direction. (laughs) (laughs) You got to have some sort of a guiding light. That's kind of where our basis is starting from. Our base is always there. Okay, would you say then the the foundation is helping people? The foundation is the Bible. What did Jesus do? Okay, okay, okay. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Well, (laughs) and it should it should mold your life if you if you're gonna follow something. And, and if you mold your life and you see the benefits from it, mm. then you want to keep doing it. Can I throw something out? Sure. Yeah, please do. Um, is it possible for different groups of people who don't have the Bible to still help each, help each other? Absolutely. Do you really need the Bible as your foundation then to help people? Well, it, you, if you need can do it to without have it? Some, sort of, some sort of solid background to follow it because we but are so But if the so background's imperfect. different... If yeah. that foundation is different for different people and they still help each other, is that really the foundation? Well, then it depends, right? I'll yeah. tell you, I'll give you a basic idea. In this country, mm-hmm. you have so many people who say they believe the Bible. Mm-hmm. And yet there's so much of problems. Mm-hmm. Why? A lot of them call themselves Christians, mm-hmm. but yet they have so many differences. When it comes to a falsehood of who they're going to follow, mm-hmm. they, they, they look at men. And they have certain things about issues, about whatever it is, about nationalism or mm. flag or anything. They're always looking at going that direction rather than looking at the Bible where it talks about peace, talks about love, mm-hmm. talks about justice, unity. talks about unity, talks about mercy. All those qualities all thrown aside because you start believing in this fundamental oh, idea. If you want to go, that's totally fine. I, I guess I can wrap up then. Yeah. Um, so, so Carla and Francis... The principles that you, just as a quick summary, principles that you guys brought up was it's important to help each other. You guys were 100% confident that that is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You were, you, when I asked if you were able to recognize what it would take to change your mind, you didn't give, or you weren't able to recognize anything. Is that, would you say that's a fair statement? There's nothing that you can recognize that would change your mind. About what we, uh, what we That would want. at least inform you that you might be incorrect. Oh, that we might be incorrect. No, we are, we are we're totally... You're absolutely confident. We are absolutely mm-hmm. confident. Do you think that... I'll leave them this last question. Yeah. Last question. <laughs> yeah, ma. Oh, are you talking to me? Oh, oh. Nikki. 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 Oh, what? So, can you speak, man? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, do ya? Well, then, panyo. Okay. Okay. So, um, what I guess was... If someone is very confident that they're right, but don't have a way to recognize that they're wrong, is their confidence in being right justified? Very good, very mm-hmm. good question. Now, when we speak about being right, we are talking about following the way of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So we are perfectly imperfect in what we do. So we are trying to reach a point where we can continuously follow his footsteps. Mm. And along the way, we are wrong. Mm. Because we do mistakes. We make mistakes. We're always going to make mistakes. But the important thing we do is, do we get up and correct those mistakes okay. so we can still do the right thing? Okay. So when we look at the end of the line... So you guys aren't saying you're perfect. Oh, oh absolutely. But you have 100% confidence you can't be wrong. About the concept of what Jesus has said. So maybe us. like more... And I'm not putting words yeah. in your mouth, yes. but maybe like... I'm 99.99999% practice. <laughs> Only in the fact that I'm an imperfect being, I'm as confident as I possibly can. And be we, and we recognize that when we don't put our best foot forward and when we don't reach out, we see the end result isn't good. That seems like good evidence for you. So that helps me to be more confident that this is definitely the right direction. Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, How long have you been absolutely. studying Chinese? Uh, so at my last job, everyone, we are the only American in the group. Everyone was Indian or right. Chinese. Right. Really? And there was 44 people there. So like I had to learn some basic some stuff. Some Hindi. Uh, I'm uh, Mary Das is how I say my friend. So I'm Mera Dos. Mea Kaisi Ho Mary Das. 
Caicedo. Ah, Caicedo Mirador. Caicedo Mirador. Very good. We got it. Chinese sounds like you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm better with Chinese. I'm All right. Chinese, yeah. And we're just chatting. Oh. Okay. Cool. I just love that the connecting point is a language, <laughs> and that yeah. you know, like、uh, languages, that they're surprised that you have in common. I love that, <laughs> like from the talking and talking, and this is the way it is, and then there's the like you're laughing and like、yeah. shaking hands and all that. It's、you、beautiful. You do have Hindi as well, and you have some friends that speak Urdu. I would say pro tip:、mm-hmm. if you're ever going to learn a language that's very, very popular in India, learn. Hindi because it's the same as Urdu, which is a completely other country's language, but they basically just call the same language two different. So you get a two for one there. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, anyway, good to know. What do you guys think as far as like a breakdown?、Um, I see some things I could have worked on there, but、um, I think the salient point was like when I throw out how to stay focused on conversation, how to stay focused on like the crux of the the issue. And then I think I threw out a question that the lady who was listening to it was like, "Oh, I didn't think about that." And then the guy was like, <laughs> "Oh, that's pretty good, but I'm gonna keep doing my spiel."、Mm-hmm. Like, "Oh, okay, okay," but I see like you guys are now thinking. And when they do their walk, maybe they'll continue having a conversation like that. Maybe that's wishful thinking, or maybe that's something that could help to show that you can actually have those kinds of conversations、mm-hmm. with other people. What? What's、okay. the biggest difference you have seen uh, when um, you, uh, when you interview two people, like a couple like this, versus one person? Because I, I was thinking that、uh, you almost said it right now, but it was like they are. She's defending his kind of like right to speak as the man about the things. This is what I'm seeing. I, I might be completely wrong. No, but that he, he he's the person in the home that would probably often talk about these things and the principles and how they use them and. And she gives him that space, even though she would maybe have been thinking there about the, the, the like, the, like open question there, rather than saying how they speak at home about their principles, right? Something like this,、um, and I think I've noticed that in other kind of like couple conversations where they kind of fall into roles when、mm. their like deeply held beliefs are are maybe challenged or asked to be spoken of, right. And I'm wondering about it, how you reacted to those dynamics, and what have you found? No, I think this pro- this video might be the best example of that. I did talk with a couple immediately afterwards, and the guy wanted to talk about the same thing, like being nice to each other, being cool. And I was like, "Cool, we'll talk about that." And he had a pretty good standard of evidence for the thing that he believed, which is like, "Well, I saw these examples, and then I was thinking about like this and this example, and I think." Yeah, I'm probably better off being nice to people than being mean to people. So if everyone else followed that same rule, I think we'd be better off. And I think that's pretty good. And I was like, yeah, that works for me. And then the lady, the girlfriend who was sitting next to him, was like, "What's your philosophy?" She's like, "There's no such thing as an objective truth." And I'm like, <laughs> "So there's there's no way to show that anything's right." It's like, yeah. And I was like, "Are you 100% confident about that?" She's like, "Yes." I'm like, "Wait, so you think nothing's true, but you think you're right about that?" She's like, yes.、And、I'm like, there's no contradiction there, and then she just got angry. <laughs> <laughs> What am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do? Like,、um, and the guy was. I like, have a question. Thanks, Ren. Oh, go for it. Go for it, Linda. I have a question for Ben. Please,、mm. quickly.、Um, I will abandon. <laughs> I will abandon a belief if I discover <laughs> reliable information that falsifies it. Ooh.、Oh, I strongly agree, but I'll struggle to do it anyway. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think maybe there was a struggle in the conversation where the guy was like used to the role and he didn't want to give it up. But I think the lady was definitely. If you rewatch that video and see the facial expressions of the lady as the questions start getting to that that main crux, she's like, "Ooh, that's right. I don't have a good point for that." Okay, and then she lit. Li- nice. Something which I think you did very well there, and、uh, ties into Linda's question about doing AC with two people. Uh, the openness and the way in which you approached the conversation was such a good model to her, compared to her husband, who, like you said, was kind of pontifying, getting onto his soapbox and preaching down at you. And I'm sure that、um, probably with the personality he has, and not that it's a bad bad thing to have, but he, he he's somebody who gets into these probably pretty heated debates with people very easily. And、mm. she might have been sitting there saying, "Oh shit, it's going to happen again." <laughs> and、uh, <laughs> and I think. Just just doing that already got her into a mind space where she was, wow, this is interesting. This is something I've never seen before, and、um, there's there's deep value in that.、Mm. 
I, I spoke to two girls with my whole experiment on um, disclosing that I'm an atheist at the start of the conversation. It ended very badly. It ended with the, the one girl begging me for 20 minutes to pray to Jesus as soon as I'm on my deathbed just mm -hmm. to get saved. And we had the dis discussion about um, honesty, and I said I would see that as dishonest. And I kept asking a couple of questions, but it, it got very heated. And at the end of the conversation, I just asked a simple question um, to a friend who was kind of pulled out of the conversation because she didn't want to get into this heated conversation. Uh, although she had the same position as the friend who was preaching at me, I asked her, who do you think has a bigger probability of finding truth? Uh, you guys with the, the approach that we spoke about now or me with the approach that I'm taking? And that sounds very very self-congratulatory but at the end she said no i think your approach is better mm. and it, it, that conversation in no way went the way i wanted it to go and i didn't at all model as well as i wanted to but there is value in trying to show people it's you don't have to be so stuck in your ways you don't have to be so fundamental about what you believe mm -hmm. i think you did that very well in this conversation Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I like the way you insisted on the on the core question. Like, could you identify if you're wrong? You you really like the the last time you said it when he was like, "That's a really good question," and then he <laughs> continued, you know, with the the soapbox. But at least you got him to say that, and she heard it, and she, you know, that that you could challenge him. I thought that was brilliant, really valuable and moment. And also that completely by stepping the challenge in the God belief too. It's not. Yeah. Like SE is not yeah. about like, hey, you believe in God? Let me show you why you're wrong. It's yeah. is the reasoning valid? If it's not valid, let me see if we can work on a more valid way. And the yeah. question of is it justified? Is it a statement that it's not? It's just, can you please explain to me how that is? And I'm open mm -hmm. to figuring out what it could be or not. And when he started preaching and said, I was like, well, let's focus back on that question. Then. <laughs> can you please explain to me how this is justified or not? And I think by by issue of not presenting a case. It's something that they'll think on more, hopefully. Mm. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Or at least showing other people that you can have that kind of conversation where at the end everyone's smiling and it could be short. And you can leave a really great impact. Yeah. Something and were... um, in your approach, which I think might have been detrimental in this conversation, but oh, I wouldn't nope. say change it. Maybe maybe change it up a bit. Um, oh. you're, you're, you're very honest. When you start talking to somebody, you've kind of got this, I'm going to challenge you. And that's kind of the dynamic you're, you've got going. And you do it beautifully because you, even though you, you ask these challenging questions, you balance it with, with rapport building and whatever. But here, I think he saw that challenge. His mental process was not, I need to reflect on what I believe. It's cool. This guy wants to challenge me, so I need to defend myself. Mm. So I'm, I'm wondering if the, um, and that works. It works well for some people. I mean, if if it's somebody like that, that convers one of the first conversations you had with Tim, he is a guy who, when somebody challenges him, he sees it as an exercise of actually reviewing what he believes. He yeah. he was at that spot, and that conversation I think was deeply meaningful to him for that reason. Um, I don't think this guy was at that spot, so it might have been detrimental to the conversation to take that approach. You, you, but you won't know it ahead of time, but it might be something worth experimenting with. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something. Being that room. Yeah. Actually, I came to think of, um, I've noticed uh, it being done uh, in previous conversations also when it, when the kind of like the belief is something positive, like something that is like we all think it's great to be good, kind to other people. I've heard you say that, that, that I'm going to challenge this, you know, usually then and I have wondered it before like is it really necessary mm. like, just go and challenge it why not challenge a positive belief uh, like what would why yeah what would be the problem with challenging a positive belief so like if it's a positive belief, remove the disclaimer you think yeah, yeah. Or, or like any uh, any uh, belief but okay. I, I, I kind of read I might be wrong but I read that you're more concerned when it's a positive belief Mm. Like I read it, like you you want to say, like you know, you're fine believing that. I'm just gonna like challenge it a bit. Yeah, I and, 
or maybe I hear it just differently because it is a positive thing. Mm. Maybe it's, you say it the same way for both, but I'm kind of thinking, why not just leave it out? I don't know. Yeah, like my mindset is um, it, it could be nervous energy on my part because I'm trying to basically say, hey, tell me something that you strongly believe is true. Okay, great. Now I'm going to question it. Like, yeah, <laughs> just so like people are up to date with the, like the pace of the conversation because it's not mm. just like, hey, I really like gardening. Oh, cool. What kind of gardening do you like? It's more like I really like gardening and it can help people. Like, how do you know it can help people? Like, I just want to pe let people to know, like, mm -hmm. I'm not so much against your side. I'm just asking questions about this thing with you and see if we can figure that out together. And I agree that it probably worked better with some people than the other. But for people who would get challenged mm -hmm. by asking, hey, would you mind if I gently challenge that question or that statement that you made? They probably get challenged by something else later down the road. I could definitely work on different ways of asking that, though. I'd probably say, mm -hmm. hey, if I ask some questions about that, uh, yeah, maybe ask uh, questions, like have it be a little bit more neutral. I don't know. Maybe just try it. Challenge. Instead of the word challenge, I could try questions. Mm. You know, mm. work. Something I've, I've I just thought about, uh, it's something which I always ask myself is, I, I want to do this ethically. And especially when it gets to certain beliefs, um, I don't want some or somebody to feel blindsided. Uh, right. I don't want somebody who, after the conversation, Maybe the conversation at home and they started thinking about things. They Google it and they see street epistemology. They see manual for creating atheists and they're like, this guy was was being dishonest. He was lying to me. So, uh, and what I'm just thinking now is that we, you kind of can tailor your script to the belief that's being discussed. So when it's a very, very deep, deeply held belief, which is going to, where you think somebody is going to have that adverse uh, reaction potentially, which this would not would not be a case like that in my mind at least, because you didn't mm -hmm. jump into the God belief so much. There you can go to that, that extra step of really trying to um, explain why you're doing this and prepping them more than you would worry if somebody just came up and said, "Yeah, I've got this lucky coin, and I think it's always right." Something like that. Okay. I hear it. This is definitely something I'm going to be thinking about more. I love talking to you guys about stuff like this. Um, you'd be amazed how, like, there. I don't think there's anyone else on the planet where I could, like, sit down and for, like, an... I love this kind of setup yeah, that we got. I have something. It took me a while to uh, get it in my head. But I have this uh, to say about what Ben just said. <laughs> a critique to a critique, critique. is that... Um, yeah, because I'm I'm kind of thinking about that. Like we, we, I think I've said this before, actually. So maybe this is where we just view this thing very differently. Mm. That I don't think it's that traumatic to realize at home that this person who was asking me these questions that made me think doesn't believe what mm. I believe. Um, and if it has affected them that much that they've continued thinking about it and gone home and gone and Googled it, I reckon that's like a great thing, and that. Um, I'm that impressed and in love with SE, like I said in the beginning of this show, I believe, that I think that if they look at, like, if they then start looking at the videos, um, it's like just win-win. I, I, I'm not seeing that it would be like, oh, my God, he doesn't believe. Now I feel, like, violated and traumatized, unless yeah. it was like you were really being an evil, like, do, mm. do, do, you, you shouldn't believe kind of guy. Mm. I'm I'm not that convinced about the whole false pretenses thing, unless yeah. you're directly lying to them and saying that I believe in God, and so I would like to hear about your belief. <laughs> that would be lying to them. Yes. You you're not like talking of like going atheist. I don't think that's like <laughs> deceit, deceitful. You know, I don't I think don't... we have to have it on our forehead. Also, because you're willing to change your mind if they have a good hmm. argument. Are you not? I also want to submit like a, a meta critique on both of your guys' critique. Yes. I, I think the ideal is one method to work for everybody because why would, should we switch it? Why should we make the pre-initial judgment of, oh, this guy's belief isn't that important, so I'm going to try this tactic with him. Or this person mm. is very important, so I'm going to use this line of reasoning with them. It should just be, hey, SE in its best form is one thing that you can do in a lot of different situations because that – generally is in my opinion probably more less complex and more ethical than, than not but realistically i do think that there is going to be different people that will require different approaches in my mindset i don't think se is 
the different methods that you use to talk to people. I think SC is one tool that you use to have a conversation. And with that, there's a bunch of other things that you use in conjunction with that. So if you yes. read the room, that's separate from SE. And if you size, and if you make the decision, hey, I'm getting some weird vibes from this guy, that's a completely separate thing from SE. But the SE, I think, really what about this was, and like staying on focus and all that stuff, was I'm noticing that if I ask questions about this method that you're using to get your high confidence, we can assess whether or not you use a reliable way to get there or not. Mm. And what's a good way that we can have that conversation. And I think everything else aside from that was not SE. Oh, go for it. I love it because I have a meta, meta, meta critique <laughs> on this critique <laughs> that I love too deep, guys. How, how our, no, this is like beautiful, how our critique tells us, to, shows more about who we are. Mm. I think what Ty just said about. is the scientist, what Ben just said is like very true to Ben and his perspective. <laughs> and what I said was very true to me and my perspective. Mm. Like our critiques also show who we are and tells us something mm. about ourselves. Right. Which is good to look at and that we can learn from. This is what, yeah, the whole. I will, I will say one thing really cool before Linda has to go. Uh, Linda, when, you, when we first met, we were texting mm -hmm. about what's a good way to tackle the I'm 100% confident about something. How can I phrase a question to show you that 100% is never a good example? And we tried to come up with some analogies over text. This is like the first time before we ever mm -hmm. did the Thing. And I was like, what if I had like a sock drawer that was filled with red socks and blue socks? And it was like so long winded and it didn't work an example. <laughs> and between the two of us, we came out with the example of why don't you ask, are you able to recognize if you're wrong? Because if they, mm. they more likely be inclined to say no or yes, I am able to recognize that I'm wrong, which sets up the question of, OK, what would that look like? And if they said no, then it's like, OK, well, then if you can't recognize that you're wrong, how can you know that you're right? And I think that's like a good, at least, mm. setup for that question. Normally, I don't like yes or no questions, mm. but I found like that was just a good way to present, hey, 100% confidence or 0% confidence about anything isn't, norm isn't really a practical place to be if you want to justify that kind of position. Um, yeah. so that, that was like a full cool. cycle of like finally getting a chance to employ that question. Um, okay, how do we feel? Ben, do you have anything? No, oh, this was awesome. As yeah. always. <laughs> Freaking, I just want to get one of Linda's videos in here. See? Oh, yeah. All, all we need it. to do is, is, gonna have, is gonna have. finish before we do that, apparently. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> and... Yeah, I'm sorry. I've been so busy with Lapland and writing my book there right. about critical thinking. This is why I um, wanted to learn how to do SE. So that was priority number one. So okay. then my... SE practicing or uploading and editing and all that had to give way for the work with the book and the book is getting to be something really fantastic thanks to you guys and thanks to learning SE and um, the journey will continue. I thought I would have written it uh, in my time in Lapland but I've learned so much more and there's more to write so I'm going to let this um, blossom as so I learn. What's like the name the of your book? Um, I have a working title. I don't really like saying it out loud. Um, <laughs> Please don't tell me it's you might have to Christians in the face uh, with logic or something. Okay? Now we're just two books that are like ah, uh, this title is so impressionist. But I can tell you the 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 narrative really quickly. It's a, a girl who runs away from home um, and finds an abandoned house and fixes it up. And she finds that people have lived there before. She finds books and uh, evidence of um, lives lived and uh, and journals and things and um, gets into a bit of um, critical thinking. And uh, she's really curious. She, she's she got this MacGyver streak. She likes to fix things and uh, test things. So it's kind of like the scientific method and like adventure and awe and let's have fun uh, exploring the world kind of a book, graphic novel. So it mm. will be illustrated and have some SE in it. In place. Very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. Looking so forward to that. So it's a good show, guys. Let's, how about we wrap up then? Let's wrap it up. Do we got goals? Ben, how's your foxtrot going? Mental foxtrot. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> really? Been, Falling over my feet for the first half of the session, but now I'm just perfect. Really? So I'll take my camera along tonight and prove it to you guys. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Very confident. So you would definitely say you scored your point on mastering the foxtrot in your mind. Yes. So that you can actually dance 
with your wife later on today. Very cool. We'll get Linda. To, to confirm it later, and, and I, we might have to deduct that point. <laughs> okay, we'll come back. Now, if you thought about it, you get the point. It's locked in. You got that one point. That puts casual canines at three points this year. Ooh. Very nice. Linda Mako. Yes, I used Ben Diesel's questionnaire, the street epistemology questionnaire. The easiest way to get started with SEs is to just have this around and ask people these wonderful questions because it's fun. People yeah. generally like it. And if they don't like it, just don't ask them the questions. But usually they like it. It's, it's like it's fun to think about it and it's fun to think about it together. And I asked um, Tyrone if... It, if, if this st statement is true, I often investigate beliefs that do not match my own. And he said, he agrees. And then I asked Ben, I will abandon a belief if I discover reliable information that falsifies it. What does falsify mean? Is it test testable? Or it like proves it wrong? It means Incorrect? that, yes. You have a frame of reference to know what it looks like if it's wrong. Exactly. Oh, so that was kind of linked to the show. And uh, oh. Ben Diesel uh, <laughs> answered <laughs> that he um, strongly agrees, but might struggle to do so, might struggle to let go of the belief. That's understandable. That we all do that. That dissonance. Yay. Yeah. Check I'm, it out. I'm, I'm loving this guy, so <laughs> so uh, my goal was to learn how to do the command mail wave in terms of the cell, in time for the cell games before cell destroys the entire world. Uh, I had a reservation for a place called Hyperbolic Time Chamber, Inc. It was really, really cool. Turned out it was just a karaoke bar, and it was not the place where I need to go to train for a year in about an hour time. But I'm still, I'm still dedicated to saving the world. And even if some guy does it before I do, I'm totally fine with that, too. I'm open to it. But, you know, I'm going to keep mastering my chi. Um, I'm going to keep working out. I got this uh, one, two times gravity situation thing going on. And I think I'm I'm working up there. So again, it's two for two. I didn't I didn't meet the goal, but I'm still very motivated. I think if I just work hard and just like master my yelling, I can get it done. And you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't know, dude. Your hair That's game is true. going to have to be worked on very very seriously oh, so it's a black thing actually black people when they go super saiyan it's it, it actually shrinks into their hair oh really yeah it shrinks into the that. scalp yeah so any bald guy you see don't get in a fight with him because he's a super saiyan <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think we can end it there let's um so thank you guys so much for joining us for League of SE Reviewers. All we do is show our content to each other and try to get some good critical feedback. If you want to join in the conversation, just leave some comments below and we would love to hear and know from other people that are part of this league of friends that are interested in getting each other better at this wonderful hobby of talking to each other. Talking on the same level and not talking past each other. Anyway, we're going to close with our catchphrase. I am both rubber and glue on three, two, one. I am, I both, am both rubber, rubber and, and glue. glue. See you guys. <laughs>